Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in map square H7 of the Isle of Siptar building a mod-free Terranian PvE base. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, I started off with, of course, the base plate. The blueprint is on screen now, and I first drew out the base plate with sandstone foundations, covered the edges in fence foundations, then removed the sandstone pieces and replaced them with Terranian ceilings supported by pillars. I hardly ever use Terranian, but a suggestion on my last video by The Miss Lid got me thinking and I decided to go with a Terranian PvE base for something elegant yet practical. The base plate itself is quite simple, leaving plenty of room within the base and setting up towers that will decorate the roof later on. Next for the walls. Seeing as this is a Terranian build, I wanted to go all in on the Terranian theme and pretty much only use that material set. Initially, I intended to create larger windows on the second tile of walls using door frames. However, I wasn't too keen on this in the end and I instead opted to replace the door frames with storm glass windows. Aesthetically, they work much nicer and whilst they aren't Terranian, they do fit with the set really well. For the ground floor, I built the walls two tiles high around the base sectioning off two side rooms from the main hall, leaving the base open plan by using inverted sloping sides to create open doorways from the main hall to the wings. I also decided to use the stair trick to put a terranium pillar in the centre of each open doorway to separate them a bit better, though if you're not a fan of how this looks, I can completely understand that, you can of course skip over this and it won't affect stability later on. After building stairs in the wings, I then began on the first floor. I used Terranian ceilings to mark out the traversable area on this floor which will be less than the ground floor as most of the utility will be downstairs. I created catwalks in both the wings, leading to a central area with a balcony overlooking the back of the main hall. Once I'd done that, I then built up the first floor walls. I built the walls two tiles high over the central hall and one tile high over the side rooms placing storm glass windows at regular intervals mirroring the floor below to ensure the build gets enough natural light. I recreated the same open doorways from the ground floor on the first to create a window that looks into the workshops below, and I then capped off the walls over the main hall with terranian ceilings. Next I began to set up the roof. I included wedges in this design to allow for mini roof towers that will help to frame the build and give it a bit of extra shape to the core structure. I made these towers more interesting by building them with Terranian door frames and filling the inside with Terranian foundations, which adds a bit more detail and depth. I also did the same on a central 3x4 above the main hall for what will become the main roof. Next for the roofing itself, I firstly started on the side roofs which is where I ran into really one of the only issues with this design. Due to how finicky the clipping of inverted sloping side pieces are when they're within you know roughly 50 miles of a wedge piece, I had to remove the walls on the wedges and place the inverted pieces onto the straight walls first. This isn't too difficult, it's just a bit of a pain. I had to do something similar later on to block up another gap present in the side roofs, but you'll see that shortly. I built the roof according to the shape and flow of the building below, creating hip roofs coming to a flat apex capped off with crenellated walls. Thank you. 
Once the side roofs were done, I then finally built the wedge roof pieces onto the main towers and built the final main roof over the hall. The towers are really simple, I just use wedges to create gazebo roofs, and then I used another modified hip design with divots on the shorter side to allow for rooftop caps, and I then finished off the roof with terrainian rooftop pieces and wall caps. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've adjusted the staircase design to the design seen in the blueprint, and I've lit the structure with terrainian braziers. Whilst they're not included here, there is plenty of room for an animal pen or a altar to a god outside the build. Entering the build, I've gone for a really practical decoration approach that makes the best use out of the space available, whilst also showing off the Terranian set nicely. The front towers contain an alchemy bench and a fireball cauldron respectively. Of course, these are probably some of the smallest workstations in the game, so I thought it made sense to put them in the smaller towers here, though if you wanted to invest in the larger endgame alternatives for these workbenches, you would need a bit more space. Back in the main hall, this area contains some storage, planters for growing alchemy ingredients, and of course a medium wheel of pain for breaking thralls. There's also a large campfire here for making gruel to aid in the breaking process, and preserving boxes to keep said gruel refrigerated. Entering the left side workshop, this is the wood and hide area where the carpentry and the tannery is located. There's also a fluid press, drying racks and a casting table in the room, along with some storage in the back right side. It's pretty cluttered, but you can easily walk around and it works quite well. On the catwalk above there is also plentiful storage so you can stock up on resources. On the other side is the metalwork workshop, where ores are smelted, smithed and fashioned into armour, weapons, tools or resources for the base. This side is a little less cramped and includes a large work furnace and a side kiln for efficiently smelting bricks and other building resources, along with a decent armourer's bench and also of course a blacksmith station. On the balcony above is a saddler's workbench and some more storage. Heading upstairs, these are very minimalist living quarters. This base is designed for one or two very hardworking exiles, and this area reflects that in its no-nonsense design. There's a bed, a writing area and a tinkerer's table, along with access to the front balcony that overlooks the entrance.
And there we have it, a Terranian PvE base on the Isle of Siptar in map square H7. Thanks for watching, as I mentioned earlier, Terranian is probably my least used building material, simply because I really struggle to find an application where the over-the-top elegance of the material set actually works well. However, that being said, I am pretty happy with this build, and I think it suits the Terranian design pretty nicely. I think I might have to play around with this material a little more, this build has definitely made me a bit more aware of the potential of this DLC set. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. On that note, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, Illfated, Coffeeman04, Jacques, Marion Lad, Ryan, Alfric, and Eagle Rose. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.